Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to do a manual install of OpenStack. And this is going to be a video in multiple parts that I'm going to publish later on. And I will link to the playlist down below and also to the script I'm using today. And this OpenStack installation has been a research project for multiple months that culminated into this video. So it's going to be really interesting to go through this and show you how to manually install OpenStack, talk about the different pieces and getting to know this really interesting infrastructure uh, system that has a lot of moving parts and is a very complicated application actually. But when it comes down to it, you can use it for very powerful things. So let's switch over to my screen here and you see Ceph. I usually start here. We, we have a Ceph cluster. This is a single node Ceph cluster, so it only has one host, but it can store data. I have 20 gigabytes of data, so not much of it. But my main focus here is that I want to use this as my storage back end. So we will install the OpenStack cl cluster and then add Ceph as our back end. So let's start the installing process. We will switch over here to my a console and we have a Debian system with nothing installed on it just a clear clean Debian bullseye install so the first thing we need to do is add curl uh, curl could be installed on your system and uh, OpenStack is supported on multiple different systems. Debian is not actually a supported system but Ubuntu is and it works pretty good in Debian as well uh, Red Hat is of course supported as this w was a software that actually began at Red Hat. Uh, next up we will curl down this public key from the OSBPO repository at Debian and add that to our key repository and then we can add the two repositories for this software. So. It's the OSBPO, and this is a Bullseye Wallaby backport that we want to install. And we also want this Bullseye Wallaby backport no change. So this is what you find if you look at the documentation, what you need to add uh, in your source repositories. Next up, I also want to configure, this is an optional step, but I want to configure debconf so it will give me prompts in the console and not this graphical interface. I don't need that graphical interface. So here I will change to read line instead of dialog and then hi. So it will give me a lot of prompts but it will do it in the, in the console instead. And then we will run apt update. So I will get the new repositories. And after that we need to install a couple of packages. And I'm going to start with the OpenStack client. This is something that we will use a lot to run different commands against the cluster. And we also want a MariaDB server and the Python extension for that. A lot of things is written in Python when it comes to this tooling. So of course the extension to Maria, MariaDB or MySQL is needed. Now that we have installed MariaDB, we need to configure it. So we will add the configuration file mariadbconf, the 99 openstack conf. And in that we will copy paste some configuration here. So this is the MariaDB configuration for this host. So I will bind it to this IP. I will use the InnoDB standard storage engine. InnoDB one file per table. It's good for performance. Um, max connections, a lot of them, <laughs> and then UTF-8 is always good to have so you can actually use the full range of all characters if you want Chinese characters or if you want Swedish characters for instance, they are all supported in UTF-8. So let's add that there and then I will restart and enable MariaDB or MySQL DB, the service. And then this is a good thing to run every time when you install a MySQL database actually to run the secure installation. Here you can run through and do the steps that needed to make your database more secure. For instance, we have a root password that is nothing at the moment. 
uh, we can change over so you can't log in by root from anywhere else so you're just using the unisocket you could change the root password but i don't really need to because i don't really need a super secure system remove the anonymous user remove the disallow root login remotely remotely remove test database and then we reload those privileges so now we have a pretty secure mysql installation next up we need a rabbit mq server so we'll install that and rabbit mq is a messaging service so it will keep a, a lot of different queues that you can send you can send messages to exchanges, those are routed to different queues, and the queues could then be listened to by different agents. So you can think about it like we have some workload here, we want to start a couple of instances, then you might want to create a bunch of things, you send over all those jobs into a queue, and then you can have a worker over here listening to that queue, picking up things that should be done in order to get that instance up and running. So it's a way of building an asynchronous software that could still handle a large workload. We use it a lot of work where we have, for instance, a bunch of things that needs to be processed, not in order or anything like that, but we need to get through that workload. Then we put them into a queue and then we have a worker that um, slowly works through all that job, uh, work progress. Uh, we need to configure this a little bit so it can be reached outside of this node. We, so we just set the current IP address of this server so we can use it later on from uh, our compute node, for instance. Uh, next up, we will restart this service and enable it, as we did with MySQL. Then we also need to have a user on this service. So whenever this has restarted and been come enabled, that took a while. So now you need to in create a user for this as well. And the user is OpenStack with the password QWERTY. And we also set permissions for this OpenStack user so it can reach any exchange and any queue and also any vhost. So full access permissions for this OpenStack user. Uh, so adding the user and setting the permissions on the vhost slash. Well, that's pretty much the root of everything. Uh, and the last thing that we need as a prerequisite is the memcache. So we will install the Python bin uh, binaries for memcache and also the service for memcache. And this is for non-persistent data that we save in memory. Um, so like access token and similar. And this is also something that we want to uh, reach from the outside. So we'll add the IP address here on 192, 168, 6 and 78. There we go. And we do, do like we did with the other, restart it and enable it. So now we have all the prerequisites installed for OpenStack. Now we are ready to install the actual OpenStack software. So first off, when we install this, we want to have the Keystone software. And this is just installed by installing Keystone. So it's just called Keystone. And Keystone is an authentication uh, service. We will not configure the database, no tenants, no endpoints. This will make it so that we can say that these kind of URLs should be available for these users or these kind of services should be available for these users. So you can create a bunch of services, a bunch of users and create policies of what user can do what with what service. Uh, so the whole system builds upon this authentication structure. And when we are configuring the other components, we will add this Keystone authentication service to all of them. So all of them will know about this service and when we want to reach any of the other ones, we ask the Keystone service, where can I find this kind of service and what URL is that available on? And then it will figure out, do you actually have the access rights so you can run the service and do those operations there. So it's a very central part of the OpenStack infrastructure. 
could of course be installed on multiple servers and so on and using a load balancer you can uh, reach the Keystone service on all those servers. Now that we have installed Keystone we need a database for it so let's go into our MySQL database and create a Keystone database and give the user Keystone with the password QWERTY full access to that database. So create database and then grant all privileges to Keystone. And next up we will configure Keystone. So we will go into the Keystone config uh, configuration file. And here we want to look for the connection parameter. This is the database connection. Nothing is uh, configured so far. So I will add the Keystone uh, connection here. So MySQL, Keystone, QWERTY, the IP address and then the database Keystone. Uh, moreover, we also want to look at the token and what kind of tokens do we want to support. There is a thing called Fairnet that we want to support here as a token provider. So that is what we set up here as the provider. And we save that, we need to sync up the database so we have all the current values in the database and the OpenStack uh, framework has all these kind of manage uh, services. So we have a keystone, manage is a binary that we can run in order to sync up our database to this current version. So if we run this, it will go through the database and do all the migration steps to install the database to this current version. So if you later on want to upgrade to another one, you can run this again to sync up those tables so they will be in sync with the current version that you are using. Next up, we need to set up Fairnet. So there is again a Keystone Manage, Fairnet setup, and we need to supply the user and group that we want to run that setup with. And then we want to set up the credential uh, part of the service, again with the username and group. Last but not least, we need to bootstrap this service with the URLs that should be reachable for this service. So if you want to connect to the authentication service, you should use these uh, URLs. So here we have this bootstrap procedure, Keystone Manage Bootstrap. We say that the password you could reach the service with is QWERTY and this is the administrative um, account and the URLs that you can use is uh, the IP 500 v3 and the same URL goes for admin internal public and it's under the region of region 1. So you can have multiple regions where you have this kind of setup but I'm only having one region set up at the moment, but that is totally up to you to configure more regions as your services grows. Uh, and we will set up always an admin, internal and public URL. And these could be different networks. So you could have an admin network where you set up all the tasks that is going to be run in this system and then you could have an internal network and there all the traffic goes that is the back end traffic for the services and then you have a public url which is the public facing of course when somebody is visiting and actually want to go to a specific server and do some work then you have a public facing url for that so let's set up those networks we will use the same network for everyone and the same ip for everyone and it's the current uh, IP for this machine. And then I will enable the Keystone service. So it will start on startup. And I also need to put in a lot of different environment variables. So I will set the, US, uh, uh, the OpenStack username, admin, OpenStack password, QWERTY, OpenStack project name, admin, uh, OpenStack user domain is default, project domain is default, the auth URL is the URL that we set up up here, so same URL there. And the identity service should be version 3 and the image API version should be 2. So all those are needed to run the OpenStack command without any problems. 
So let's run the OpenStack command with a bunch of things here. So first off, I want to create a project. So OpenStack project create on the domain default with a description of service project and we call that the service. So this is where we will connect all the services that we install into the system will go into this specific project. Next up, I also want to create a demo project. So this is when you want to run anything in uh, OpenStack, you create a project for the users that should install different hardware on system and you can have different quotas for different projects and so on. So I will create a demo project uh, that we can use later on if we want to log in as. And in order to create a user for that, you can create user, still domain default, and you can add a demo user and prompt for password. So this demo user will have the same password as everything else. So I will use QWERTY here. Of course, you need different passwords for everything to make this secure. Uh, we want to create a role for the user. This is done just once, but when you have a user role later on, you can connect that role to your different users so they have access to the project. So if we add the role, uh, demo project, user demo, and then we have add the user role to that. So we connect it to. So in this, now we have created a user that can actually log into the system other than admin. So admin has the password query and can log into the system, but now we have an actual user that could also use the system. So this is the way to go through and create the user. Next up, we also set up uh, the admin token issue. So if you want to run OpenStack and want a specific token to do commands in the OpenStack system, you can run this. So the auth URL, the project domain is default, the user domain is default, project name is admin, username is admin, token issue. If you run this command, you will get this token here and that could be used against the different web services to connect as the admin user and do work in the system. So that's a handy command, command to know about when it comes to this um, keystone software for authentication. This was what I wanted to show for you today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have an OpenStack uh, implementation running already, leave a comment in the comment section down below. And especially if there is a specific service that you feel is more complicated and something that you can't really wrap your head around and you want me to dig deeper into that service, then leave a comment about that in the comment section as well. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. And I really hope to see you in the next video.